Hi everyone, my name is Jennifer Brea. I'm the director of Unrest and the co-founder of Emmy Action. Thank you so much for inviting me to make these opening remarks today, patient day. Um, I am thrilled that you all are assembled at the first Canadian collaborative team conference. Um, it's so exciting and I am so sad that I can't join you in person. I am in Los Angeles getting ready for May 12th and millions missing. Um, but I am so glad that you all are here together to hear the latest in ME science and think about how we can work together to advance our collective research agenda. It's so easy to feel powerless when this disease robs so many of us of our lives, but if I have learned anything in this last year, it's how powerful we can be when we come together, uh, patients, healthcare providers, and researchers. We still have such a long way to go, but efforts like this are so inspiring. And so I wanted to talk to you today about hope. I am feeling more hopeful than I ever have before that we're going to have in the not too distant future, more treatments available for patients, and not just for those who have the means and the access, um, but drugs that are accessible to all of us. Um, I have more hope than ever that we are going to have a cure in our lifetimes. And that hope really comes from the way that all of our efforts are starting to grow and create synergies more powerful than any one individual, organization, or country could achieve on its own. I am so inspired by all of the new research collaborations, many of which are crossing borders of geography and discipline. How the science is helping to transform public perceptions of our disease and how in turn all of our public outreach is creating new opportunities for funding science and growing the field. I am hopeful because more patients are getting diagnosed and getting access to the help and the support they need. It's a drop in the bucket compared to the enormity of that need, but the word is getting out and I know the more we can find help and support one another, the stronger we will become as a community. And I wanted to say to patients in particular, um, people outside of our community have said, um, and we have said of ourselves, um, that we are too sick. We're too sick to save ourselves. We're too sick to fight and secure the future that we so desperately need. And I know that we can't do it alone. No one, no one can, no one ever has. Um, but I have always believed that we are the ones we need. And I've seen that in the tremendous acts of generosity, the mutual support, and the extraordinary courage I've witnessed over the last many years. We are more powerful than we know, and I think we've only just begun to scratch the surface of what we can achieve, no matter our disabilities. And I was so glad that Dr. Hyde spoke of that yesterday. And so all of that gives me hope. I also wanted to talk about what we need. We need so many things. Um, a giant bucket of money falling from the sky would be really, really nice, um, and we're working on that. But there are two things that have been especially on my mind um, after all of the, the traveling and speaking um, and, and talking with people I've done in the last year um, with the rollout of unrest. First, we need to bring in the next generation of clinicians and researchers. Um, people's interests form when they're young, and if we want to have the feel that we need um, in terms of the size and um, the support, you know, in 10 years, we need to be starting um, with, with, with students. And what's been incredible as I've traveled to universities and medical schools with NRAS is that there is so much interest and enthusiasm among students who are pre-neuroscience or who are pre-med pre um, or who are pursuing graduate studies. And I think the charity sector and the government sector, um, we need to think together of new ways to reach and to support that interest. Um, and the main thing that students want is mentorship, connection, and opportunity. And so I have found myself becoming an informal jobs board um, for aspiring ME doctors and researchers. And um, I want to, to, to formalize that. Um, and one of the major focuses of ME Action scientific and medical outreach over the next several years is to really build that network um, to build a bridge between established clinicians and researchers um, and those who are newly converted um, or questioning 
um, or aspiring, um, and to help them find jobs in your labs, um, get advice about medical school, um, and for people who are farther along in their careers to have a space where they can discuss clinical um, approaches um, and research with people who, who are expert. Um, and I know so much of that is already happening informally, but I think there's a way that we can you know, ramp up the outreach um, and bring more and more people into the conversation. And so Jamie Seltzer, um, who's in the audience today, um, Jamie, if you're in the room, um, please um, uh, stand up and wave hello. Um, and she's going to be supporting those efforts. Um, and so if you would like to help um, um, get involved, um, especially clinicians and researchers, um, and if you have any ideas, please do go and talk to her. I think the second thing we need to do is to reach out beyond the boundaries of our diagnosis as patients, clinicians, and as researchers. Um, those conversations are already starting to happen, um, whether it's the growing conversation about the role of mast cells in this disease, um, or the talk that Peter Rowe gave yesterday um, mentioning ehlers danlos syndrome and hypermobility, um, or the recognition that many of the drugs that work in at least some of us work, work across um, patients with many different but related diseases. And so what I'm talking about goes beyond sub subtyping. Um, sorry, what I'm talking about goes beyond subtyping, which, you know, creating boxes within boxes. I'm really talking about breaking the box and thinking laterally. And yes, we need to group patients by, by triggers, um, by symptoms, but we also need to group them by mechanisms that might transcend or cut across the traditional boundaries. And I say that because after reading you know, thousands of emails and traveling the world, meeting thousands of patients, um, and that's not science, but it is field work, it is observation. I met so many with diagnoses other than ME who said of unrest, not only that is my experience, but rather that is my disease. And if we keep having parallel conversations as researchers, as clinicians, and as activists, I don't know that we're going to be able to do the science, provide the care, or build the political will um, and the movement that we will need. I am so grateful for your time today, and I am so excited for the future. I think it looks bright, um, but let's all keep working hard to bring it here, not in 10 or 20 years, but tomorrow. Um, let's keep moving. Uh, Thank you so much for your time and have a great conference.